Well, of course, that means that Sina Newell safely through to the semi-final. And, of course, this is the bottom half of the draw. And the most significant thing of that, I guess, means that for the first time in 18 years, China will not have a finalist in the women's singles at the All England Championships. So to our next match, and it's men's doubles, it's the Asian champions, Kim Ki-jung and Kim Sa-rang of Korea, up against number four seeds, Kenichi Harakawa and Hiroyuki Endo of Japan. Yung. On which side? Right? So, the number six and the number four seeds. And here are the number four seeds from Japan. Kanichi Hawakawa. On the left as we look at them. Hero Yuki Endo. Right. Number four in the world. Both of them 26 years of age. And their win-loss record for the year translates into three tournaments so far. Two quarterfinals. And one round of last 16. Struggled this year to live up to their seeding position. In fact, they haven't managed to do so once so far in the three tournaments played. But their first two matches, both against qualifying pairs. First of all, the pair from Thailand, Ban Yu Pang. And then the pair of Robert Blair and Tan Bing Shen. Both of them going the full distance. It just shows what quality we have in these Super Series events. The fact that qualifiers take a seeded pair full distance in the first two rounds. So to the Asian champions, Kim Ki Jung and Kim Sa Rang. Kim Sa Rang on the left as we look at the 23 year old. <laughs> His partner in the younger age of 22. Number five in the world ranking. They have been as high as four. Spent one week in January earlier this year at number four. The win-loss record for the year translates into a semi-final last week at the German Grand Prix and lost out to the eventual winners. <laughs> in Japan. And a first round loss in the Malaysian Super Series event. Well, in contrast to their Japanese opponents, both of their matches have been won in double quick time. And, uh, and, uh, Peterson wins in the first round, and teammates yeah, Shimoto and Hirata do apologize, not teammates, of course, Shimoto and Hirata are from Japan. So the Asian champions in Australia in their first ever Super Series event. That was in Japan. A very impressive from her too. Beats Kiki and Kiat and Tan Bin Hyon in the final in Tokyo. And then the very next week won the Indonesian Grand Prix Gold event. Soren Knudsen from Denmark is our umpire. And Martin Bannon. And a service judge from England. So the Asian champions, Kim Ki Jung and Kim Sa Rang, the number six. Ladies and gentlemen, up against the number four seats. On my right, Kim Ki Jung, Kim, 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 Kim Sa Rang, Korea. And on my left, the Yuki Endo, Kinichi Avakawa, Japan. Kinichi <laughs> Avakawa to serve to Kim Sa Lang, double all, play. So the number four seeds from Japan get this quarter final on the way, the first ever quarter final here at the World oh! Championships. Also One second round. Down the last two years. Uh, hey. Hey. 
Vegas. Also oh. making their third appearance at the Orlando the Championships. Prior to this year, never made oh. it past the first round. But Anthony, I have to say, I think that the Asian champions, Kim Ki and up. Kim Sa Rang, are probably one of the most, if not the most, improved pair in world badminton over the last 12 months. Massive improvements. And they have won one of the Super Series tournaments as well, so their confidence must be very high. They are the quickest pairs on tour. Great defence. One, they are training two. with the likes of Lee Young Day daily. So you can't fail to improve when you're up against that kind of quality every single day. And of course, Lee Young Day won the All England Championships last year with John Day Sun. Two, Olympic champion four. in the mixed doubles as well. You're right, if you have a strong squad like that, you can improve. Now, this is actually the fifth meeting between these two pairs. Previous four occasions, honours are shared. Three, two. Two wins apiece, but perhaps most important, the last two occasions that they met, it was the Koreans that won, including the quarter-final of the Japan Super Series event last year, which, of course, the Koreans went on to win. Jump. It was an incredible Five, cross court three. drive from this match that set up the rally and the big power overhead. It really is a challenge for the Japanese pair to take the net away up from the Koreans. This is a test of the mid court power. The Koreans for me are the ones that are the stronger pair in that mid court Six, area. Three. gold medals Five, last year at the World University Championships. Yeah, it was plum on the line. Men's doubles, he won with Lee really Young Day, 228, played with Angle. give away the lift easily in this match. Korea just possess too much firepower. As we saw from the angles as well. Just too good Nine, attack. Three. Doubles here back in 1997. And with high time gone. Well, it'll be lucky happy with his men. 11-3. Eight-point advantage. Only played five minutes, and here we are at the mid-game interval. Extraordinary. Well, I knew they were quick. Ah! 
Two coaches on court talking to the players independently rather than talking to them as a pair. It's very much an Asian way, you see, a long time with the Asian countries. It's not something we tend to do in Europe. We have a coach that goes on, maybe two coaches that go on, but they speak to the players as a pair so that they both know what's being said to the other. It seems to work. Can't criticise it. 11, 3, play. Service over. What a backhand smash. Four, 11. There was from the Korean in that rally. Set up the winner. Service over. 12, 4. <laughs> people can hit an actual full-out smash. Six, twelve. Good tactic from Endo. Variation on the serve. Putting in a flick serve. I don't think I've play, seen a player quite as quick as him coming forward. It's extremely... Seven, seven. Forty, seven. They just look so strong to me, Joe. The yeah. Japanese have really been taken apart in this midcourt. It's almost forcing them back. The only question mark I have in my mind is the fact that I have seen this Korean pair start matches like this, but unable to finish them at this sort of pace. Whether they learn to keep this intensity the whole way through a match, well, I'm about to find out, but it has been one of their weaknesses that they've failed to keep up this sort of pace. When they learn to do so, as a pair in the world that would be able to match them. That just comes with, it, comes with experience as well. That, you know, I don't think there's anybody in the world that can, that can play a full match that flat out. He can be very much like the coach that sits down the court. He was very capable of that. Stiffen his movement when he jumped around the head there. I don't know whether he's had a 
back injury problem in the past. Certainly nothing wrong with the return 16, of serve. Nine. Oh, so that was a highly talented singles player. When he was younger, there he is. Oh, so the serve is just short. Ten, sixteen. Good judgment from Ayakawa. Oh. Oh. So, so up. <laughs> 17, 10. from Hayakawa, feet not in the right place at all. with the defence. Instead of just defending, they're looking to drive the shuttle back, turn it, and they block and turn the shuttle. Here, drive, they, one of them looks to go forward to the net. There we go. And again. Perfect. Oh, string's gone on the racket. I think so, all right. <laughs> Kim Sarang could quite hear, clearly hear the string break. Different sound of the shuttle coming off the strings. It is so difficult to hit a shuttle when you have a broken string as well. Why they didn't just play the shuttle to Kim Sarang, and he would have inevitably probably put the shuttle in the net. Eight points. Oh. 40, 20. Oh, it was a miss hit from 15, 20. Oh, count. Two game points saved. Three, four. Oh, Sixteen, twenty. Oh, I thought he may have broken the strings again. That doesn't sound too healthy, but it was okay. Oh, oh. 
third time lucky. Third game points, and this time the Asian champions Kim Ki Jung, Kim Sai Rang, Kim Vung, and he's not yet in game. 21, 16. 21, 16 confirms the umpire. 15 minutes, and the one going to be good. Kang Kyun Jin just saying something about the blocks on the defense there. So in the next doubles part of the round, Kang Kyun Jin. Tournament, I hasten to add. Great fun playing with him. Well, it certainly appeared to me that Korean coach Kang Kyun Jin was saying to his men on their defensive court play to one, keep turning seconds. the shovel, keep court trying one, to drive it or, or block it across court. Not that I speak any Korean, but from his gestures, that appeared to be what he was suggesting. There's a brilliant tactic happening in doubles. A lot of players get very carried away with the hard drives through the net player. Second game. Lucky no those away. Very good tactics. Definitely wide. One, no. <laughs> seven, seven. One, all. Oh, such a good return of serve. Look at this. shot we didn't really need to put as much power into this last one as he did into the center of the court and his partner in all sorts of trouble here Japanese pet. I think what you were saying earlier, Jill, about the Koreans playing at such a high pace and being able to keep that going all the time. You can actually see signs of that happening already. The Japanese players decided that they're going to go over the top a little bit more, make the Koreans work hard from the back, and then counter. Oh, 
defense. Five, one, one. I don't understand why they're just lifting on the defence, though. They did so well with blocking in the opening game. It's getting faster and faster. These smashes. 257. 159 miles per hour. Now the court will need to be mopped of the perspiration. I have to wonder, though, Anthony, I mean, having watched this Japanese pair yesterday, and losing the opening game to qualifiers Robert Blair of Scotland and Tanbin Sheng from Malaysia. I do wonder whether they don't prepare properly or something for these big matches or, you know, I don't want to take anything away from the Koreans because I thought the Koreans in the opening game here now and in fact Blair and Tan yesterday in their first game were superb. But you've got to ask the question, why is it that they don't seem to be able to play at the, the pace that they want to be able to play at? right from the start of the match. Yeah. It is an interesting seven, seven, one to look at, Joe, that's for sure, because two, why five. wouldn't you want to win a match in two sets if you could? It could almost be a tactic of allow your opponents to play their best badminton in the opening game, tire themselves out a little bit, and then turn on the gas in the second and third. And actually, you've got to be very fit to be able to carry that through a tournament. I'm not sure now six, it's, um, two. since 2006 and we have this scoring system where it's a, a point per, per rally. I'm not sure you can afford to do that because, I mean, here we are. What, uh, just under 23 minutes of play and we're already on into the second game. I mean, physically, nobody's going to be tired after 23 minutes Seven, or something. Two. hits from the Korean pair from the end of the first game through the second game you know, they've not always been breaking the strings but there's been a lot of missed timing Play. Set. There's a good chance for Hayakawa. He just didn't get his racket over the top of the shuttle to almost brush it off. Tried to go with more of a flatter kill. The shuttle dies straight down into the net. Absolutely huge down the middle. Well, it was really clever uh, from Kim Sarang. He didn't try and hit that one too hard. You know, he knew he was slightly off balance, but he just clipped it down into the tram line. Oh. Oh, that's so, so, uh, Took it early in the mid-court area. Nine, five. Good vision, too, to see where the gap was. Very clever. Seven, seven, seven. And he's intercepting. 
six, nine. But he does have this delightful change of pace as well. It's not all hard hitting. This one, his partner, there we go, just shuffled gone past him. Endo could have played it, he was in a good position. tactic from the Japanese which is to do you know, a good amount of defending but so a bit too obvious they need to vary that defense a lot more there's a few cross blocks that needs to go in and if they're gonna lift away they need to make sure they're always getting the shuttle right to the back whilst the Korean power is just too much Number four seeds from Japan. 16, 20. Three point advantage at the game and four. Well, you know, I was wondering uh, whether this man had a back injury. I didn't notice that uh, when he played one of those smashes just before the mid-game interval, did appear to have a back support on or Eleven, eight, the vest or eight, something to try and keep the, the back wall. Both the Korean players appear to have that. Twelve, eight. The right idea to try and vary the pace. Pace just drops fractionally and it makes such a huge impact on their capabilities within the game because they really rely so heavily on their speed, speed of movement that is. Strings to give it enough to get it clear of the net court. We'll be turning 27 next month. Noah Kawa. So, so, 
always like it. It's always a bit of good sign to me when a player, when they make an error in a certain position on court, the very next rally, they have the courage to play the winner. It's two rallies now, actually, I think they made the error in it. It's just that difference in the feet position as well. He really exploded onto that one, whereas the previous time just didn't really go for it. No. Oh, that is super. Great skills from Hiroyuki Endo. Almost seemed to put a bit of top spin on that. <laughs> Terrific shot. This time it's Kim Ki Jung. I really have been absolutely baffled by these tactics from the Japanese. You know, it was all mid-court, fast, explosive play in that opening game. And now they've been opened up and the pace of the game has dropped significantly. Yeah, there you go. Four, nowadays travel with at least a dozen rackets and I suppose they've, well, they've got some with the stringers. A whole army of stringers here. Well, our title sponsors, Yonex. And all the players, rackets. 16, 10. Too flat. It is one game apiece. Eight, second game won by Yuyuki Endo, Dimichi, Avatara, and so 21 12. The Japanese one pair game come four. back and come back strongly. 21 12, second game. One game more. Eight, eight, ちょっと
같은 경우는 조금은 조금 탁 치잖아. The big question in my mind is whether oh, the Korean pair can rekindle the sort of form and it dynamic, one, exciting one, style one, that they show in the game because they seem to have a little bit of a negative reaction. Having played so fast and so brilliantly in game number one. Into the mix, of course, that the Japanese pair out there pace the game and look to be a little more positive in the runs, which will try and attack a little bit more. Good rally. Really one down. Two down. It'll be interesting to see whether the Koreans can bring the Japanese back into this hard hitting. Fast pace game, which is more suited to the Koreans. Attacking play towards the centre of the courts in the last one. Court drives. I mean, clearly the winner was there to be had. I did have concerns for a moment as to whether Hawakawa was all right there. And he slipped over, but I think he just lost his footing. Placement of the smash from Endo. Cross the body. Oh, 
Kim Ki Jung puts everything into that smash as well. He came down with huge power. Seven, seven. Out of the way of that. Five, four. For this Seven, Japanese pair, five. at number four in the world ranking, they're the highest ranked pair left in the men's doubles, so they'll see this as a huge opportunity. There's the number one seeds, Bo and Morganson from Denmark lost yesterday. Number three seeds, Go Sun Hyung and Lee Young Day lost in the first round. And number two seeds, Kiki and Kent and Tan Bin Hyung, also lost yesterday. performance from the Japanese pair at the moment. You know, they're using every tactic they possibly can. You know, they're going over the top, they're using the blocks, they're varying the speed of the smash. And there was a time where when I used to play against the Japanese players, they would always play one style. You know, it would always be very, very fast and hard. And this pair really are using a lot of intelligence. Same time. of his back support as he went up for the jump smash there. Quite often players will wear a back support just as a precautionary thing. You know, there's so many of these jumps around the head and you can get those twinges occasionally. There's a lot of players in men's dogs in particular that will wear those back supports. Just like you said earlier about warming up the back. What's the Federer doing nine. there? Australian Open this year, oh, wearing a, a vest. Because he's got a, a little bit of a back injury. Just a, a vest underneath his shirt, just to keep his back warm and supple. Set 
Ten, seven. Try to take this image, but it's such a tight net shot from Hayakawa. Eleven, nine, yeah, but I like the fact that the Koreans eight. block the defence and move forward. Maintain their intensity throughout the entirety of the match. I think they will, really will be world beaters. at the mid-game interval. Yeah, delighted with that. So he should be. <laughs> Difficult to tell whether he's saying to them try and keep calm or whether he's trying to do them up to sort of keep the intensity going. Um, he does seem very calm in his mannerisms, doesn't he, in the way he's telling them. I definitely think he's telling them to really go fast, you know, get that pace going. They are the kind of pair that could blast out five points in a very quick bit of time. We've just seen that in the last four points. Ten deciding game. Oh! Yeah, when the Japanese oh! pair use their power oh! play. Oh! Yeah, we quite clearly see the best. when there's a bit of a tension in the arm don't click the racket head over the shuttle oh 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 flat oh like that. oh 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 their pace of movement, especially 
Oh, there we go. Lots more notes. Spotted something else about the Japanese player. attack as well and from one player to the endo very clever at the back of the court setting up his partner brilliantly and he's in there and he's moving his feet and like our is absolutely deadly <laughs> All level once again one game here, 13 all. To be a little undecided as to whether he should play the shot or not. Immediately looked down to the line after he'd played it. Yeah, looking back, was it going long? No. Can't make up your mind a little sooner than that. So now the Japanese player back into the lead. just taking the pace out a little bit. He's going very, very hard at times and he takes the pace out. And the Koreans have to create. And they don't seem to like doing that. Fifty-five 
minutes of play. Only one point separates them. Perfect shot of the vests that they're wearing. John just never looks totally confident when he has to go for these softer blocks. towards the umpire. I think the umpire was going to call a fault. I don't believe it was. No, that was fine. Well, actually, it was the Japanese pair that were questioning the umpire. The umpire was right not to call it. the momentum of the rally. Seeds from Japan. Now oh, have a match point opportunity. Deep, deep breath. Calm yourself down. Uh, match clock ticks over the hour mark. Here we are at the match point. of sport here a good low serve an excellent return a little push from endo 
and the shuttle just creeps over the net. Well, delight for the Japanese pair, but sport can be oh so cruel sometimes in the way matches are won or lost. But there, the Japanese pair safely through 16-21, 21-12, 21-19 in the deciding game. seeding for the first time this year through to the semi-final. Thank you. Tonight for the Japanese pair there because that means they are safely through to the semi final. And they play against the Taipei pair of Cheng and Lu or the Thailand pair of Jongit and Puang Puapech. So the next match on court, another winning singles. And the number seven seed, Tina Baum of Denmark, two-time former champion, playing in her last ever tournament. And she's up against this Indonesian youngster, Linda Wenny from a three. 23 Six, years of age. And a three. Diraj Binadri, one part. 